Hello everyone, I would like to show you how to create this exploding effect using geometry nodes in Blender 3.1 and the cell fracture add-on. First we will start with the modeling part, then we'll go over into geometry nodes, and finally let's take a closer look how to animate all this. So let's get started. For a change, let's start with the default cube and work from there. Let's edit the position a bit and scale it up in the z-axis, so we get some interesting proportions. I cut it twice in the height so I can get some even subdivisions. A subdivision level of 11 gave me the best results in this case. For the next step to work, make sure you have the cell fracture add-on enabled. These are the settings I used and then I let it do its magic. To keep everything nice and organized, I move all the selected objects to their own collection. As you can see, I have many single objects and all of them have their own origin. Now I select all the pieces at the bottom and put them into their own collection so I can exclude them from the Geometry Nodes modifier later on. Now we have the modeling part done and let's move to the geometry nodes. Let me add a new window first and open the geometry nodes editor. What I do now is to take one single fragment piece out of its collection so we can work with it better. I hide everything else and now we can start the node setup. By clicking on New, I can add a new Geometry Nodes modifier. I want to control the effect with an empty, and that's what I'm going to add now. To be able to change the position of the fragments, I will add a Set Position node. As you can see, changing the axis modifies the position. Since I want to use the empty to affect the position, I have to drag it in. In addition to that, I need the Geometry Proxy node. Now I add a Math Vector node and set the drop-down to Subtract. Let's see what it does. Ok, something is happening. But what I really want is the z-axis of the MT to affect the x and y location of the fragments. To do that, I will have to separate x, y and z first to get access to them. Now let's connect x and y back together. Since we want to control the x and y location, I will multiply them with a calculated z distance. Great, nothing is happening, because I forgot to set the object info to relative. This is much better now. We are getting close to the final result, but I would like to control the smoothness of the motion. By adding a map range node, we can adjust how far the empty has to travel to affect the fragments. With the dimensions in this scene, I used minus 3 and 3 for the incoming values. But we still have one problem. The fragment should travel outwards and back in as the empty passes by. To solve that, we can simply use a color ramp. We just need to have two black color stops on both ends for the effect to work. Let's try it out. It's working. So now that everything works as planned, we can adjust the strength by adding a math note and setting it to multiply. By changing the value, we can set the distance on how far out the fragment travels. Now that we have all the nodes set up, let's apply them to the other pieces. To do that, I will right-click on the collection and click on Select Objects. 
Now I select the fragment with the geometry node set up and go to the modifiers panel. There we can click on the drop down to apply the modifier to all other pieces. Now that all fragments have the modifier applied, we can go and adjust the settings in the geometry nodes to our liking. Let's not forget to activate the pieces on the bottom. Now that everything works as intended, here's the whole node setup. One little trick before we go on to the animation. By changing the white stop in the color ramp, we can control the smoothness and snappiness of the fragments moving out. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's keep it simple and clean up a bit the outliner. To make the empty a bit more visible for the animation part, let's change some settings. Perfect, let's move on. Let's jump right into the animation tab. I will join the windows cause we don't need both. And I will switch the dope sheet to the graph editor. Now let's move the empty to the top. This will be its starting position. Make sure to set a keyframe for the location. I will move the timeline for a few frames and move the empty to its final position. Press I to set a new keyframe. Select the graph for the z-axis and open the modifier tab by pressing N. Now we can add the cycles modifier to easily repeat and loop our animation. Seems to be working just fine. By changing the count value, we can set the amount of times the animation should repeat itself. In this case, I will just go with two repetitions after the last keyframes. We can just copy paste the selected keyframe into the current location of the timeline. That way we get a small waiting duration before the empty restarts from the top. From the drop down menu in the before mode, I will select no cycle. So the animation starts with our first keyframe. On selecting all keyframes, I can move them freely in the timeline to reposition the whole animation. And as soon as I'm happy with that, our animation is done. If you made it this far, here are some tips to spice things up. You may have noticed in the rendered animation that the fragments start to fly up before they expand. This is how you do it. First, let's duplicate our node setup. We also need a second set position node. After a few arrangements, we can connect it to the new set position node. For it to work, we will need a new empty to control the fragments, so let's add one. Make sure to connect the new empty to the object info node. The basics are working, but we can improve it by setting new values in the map range node. Much better. But let's crank up the strength. Nice. Now here's the new node setup. Okay, but what if we want to control the movement of the fragments? We can do so by taking a closer look into the color ramp. We can play around with the blending mode and even reposition the endpoints. If we want to go crazy, let's set the blending mode to constant. This gives us some interesting pixel like effect. The final tip is for the graph editor. Instead of having a linear animation, we can add some variation to the speed. By selecting the first keyframe and setting the interpolation mode to Bezier, 
we get some handles to adjust the curve. As you can see, this looks more interesting than a straight movement. We can go on and on until we find a motion that we like. I hope you learned something new. Have a great day and see you next time.